Chapter 9. Thalia stood before the rosewood mirror, smiling. She ran a hand down her gown. Sea foam white lace bloomed from the sweeping neckline, washing upon her breast from the powder green ocean of silk that made up the dress. A red sash covered the waist, forming an inverted peak that separated the bodice from the explosion of skirts beneath. Patterns of clear green beads were embroidered in whirls and fines across the whole of it, and bone-colored stitching stretched along the ribs. Tucked inside her bodice was a small, makeshift heart hairpin dagger that poked mercilessly at her chest. She lifted her hands to touch her curled and pinned hair. She didn't know what she planned to do now that she was dressed, especially if she'd probably have to change before the competition started, but... Skirts rustled from the doorway, and Selena raised her eyes in the reflection to see Philippa enter behind her. The assassin tried not to preen, and failed miserably. It's such a pity you are who you are, Philippa said, turning Selena to face her. I wouldn't be surprised if you managed to ensnare some lord into marriage, maybe even if his highness if you were charming enough. She adjusted the green folds of Selena's dress before kneeling down to brush the assassin's ruby-colored slippers. Well, it seems rumor has already suggested that. I overheard a girl saying that the crown prince brought me here to woo me. I thought the entire court knew about this stupid competition. Philippa rose. Whatever the rumors are, it'll all be forgotten in a week. Just you wait. Let him find a new woman he likes and you'll vanish from the whisperings of the court. Lena straightened as Philippa fixed a stray curl. Oh, it's not meant as an offense, Puppet. Beautiful ladies are always associated with the crown prince. You should be flattered that you're attractive enough to be considered his lover. I'd rather not be seen that way at all. But of the, better than his assassin, I'd wager. She looked at Philippa, Philippa then laughed. Philippa shook her head. Your face is much more pretty when you smile. Girlish even, far better than that frown you always have. Yes, Selena admitted, you might be right. She made to sit down upon the mauve ottoman. Ah, Philippa said, and Selena froze, standing upright. You wrinkle the fabric. But my feet hurt in these shoes, she frowned pitifully. You can't intend for me to stand all day, even through my meals? Only till someone tells me how lovely you look. No one knows you're my servant. Oh, they know I've been assigned to the lover of the, the prince brought in Rifthold. Selena chewed on her lip. Was it a good thing to, that no one knew who she truly was? What would her competition think? Perhaps a tunic and pants would have been better. Selena reached to move a curl that itched her cheek, and Philippa batted her hand away. You'll ruin your hair! The doors to her apartment slammed open, followed by an already familiar snarling and stomping st about. She watched in the mirror as Kale appeared in the doorway, panting. Philippa curtsied. You! He began, then stopped as Selena faced him. His brows lowered as his eyes traveled along her body. His head cocked, and he opened his mouth as if to say something, but only shook his head and scowled. Upstairs. Now. She curtsied, looking up at him beneath lowered lashes. Where, pray tell, are we going? Oh, don't simper at me. He grabbed her by the arm, guiding her out of the room. Captain Westfall, Philippa scolded. She'll trip on her dress. At least let her hold her skirts. She actually did trip on her dress, and her shoes cut into her heels quite terribly, but he would hear none of her objections as he dragged her into the hall. She smiled at the guards outside her door, and her smile burst into a grin at their exchanged approving glances. The captain's grip tightened until it hurt. Hurry, he said, we can't be late. Perhaps if you'd given me ample warning, I'd have dressed earlier, and you wouldn't have to drag me. It was hard to breathe with the corset crushing her ribs. As they hurried up a long staircase, she raised a hand to her hair to ensure that it hadn't fallen out. My mind was elsewhere. You were fortunate to be dressed, though I'd wish you worn something less frilly to see the king. The king? She was think thankful that she hadn't eaten yet. Yes, the king. Did you think you wouldn't see him? The crown prince told you the competition was to start today. This meeting will mark the unofficial beginning. The real work begins tomorrow. Her arms became heavy, and she forgot all about her aching feet and crushed ribs. In the garden, the queer, off-kilter clock tower began chiming the hour. They reached the top of the staircase and rushed down a long hallway. She couldn't breathe. Nauseated, she looked out the window that lined the passage. The earth was far below. Far, far below. They were in the glass edition. She didn't want to be there. She couldn't be in the glass castle. Why didn't you tell me sooner? Because he just decided to see you now. He'd originally said this evening. Hopefully the other champions will be later than us. She felt like fainting. The king. 
when you enter, he said over his shoulder, stop where I stop. Bow, low. When you raise your head, keep it high and stand straight. Don't look the king in his eye. Don't answer anything about without your majesty attached. And do not, under any circumstances, talk back. He'll have you hanged if you don't please him. She had a terrible headache around her left temple. Everything was sickly and frail. They were so high up, so dangerously high. Kale stopped before rounding a corner. You're pale. She had difficulty focusing on his face as she breathed in and out, in and out. She hated corsets. She hated the king. She hated glass castles. The days surrounding her capture and sentencing had been like a fever dream, but she could perfectly visualize her trial, the dark wood of the wa walls, the smoothness of the chair beneath her, the way her injuries still ached from the capture, and the terrible silence that had overtaken her body and soul. She had glanced at the king only once. It was enough to make her reckless, to wish for any punishment that would take her far from him, even a quick death. Selena, she blinked, her cheeks burning. Kale's features softened. He's just a man, but a man you should treat with the respect his rank demands. He began walking with her again, slower. This meeting is only to remind you and the other champions of why you're here and what you're to do and what you stand to gain. You're not on trial. You will not be tested today. They entered the long hallway and she spied four guards posted before large glass doors at the other end. Selena. He stopped a few feet from the guards. His eyes were rich, molten brown. Yes. Her heartbeat steadied. You look rather pretty today. Was all he said before the doors opened and they walked forward. Selena raised her chin as they entered the crowded room.